Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Merry Christmas, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on Our News, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis delivering a message of hope this Christmas. Why one doctor is calling the COVID-19 vaccine hope in a vial. Plus, how you can have a safe holiday season this year. Merry Christmas and welcome to our news. Thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight. The past year has been one of the most difficult years for Bahamians, according to Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who is using his Christmas message to spread a message of hope. The COVID-19 pandemic has come with heartbreak and loss, with the country recording 164 COVID-19 related deaths. Now the Prime Minister is reminding Bahamians to bring light and hope to others. Just as I did last year, I ask you to especially remember those who are in need at Christmas, including the least fortunate among us and those who need the gift of hope. Dr. Minnis thanked public officers, their families, uniformed branches, and all who are on duty during the holiday season. The government of the Bahamas, I thank all public officers, including teachers, nurses, doctors, and healthcare professionals for all that you do throughout the year. Catch the rebroadcast of the Prime Minister's Christmas message following this newscast. Well, hope in a vial is how one healthcare professional is describing the COVID-19 vaccine. As the Centers for Disease Control is reporting more than 1 million people in the United States have been vaccinated so far. Dr. Candice Joy McNeil was among the first healthcare providers in the United States to receive the Pfizer vaccine last Tuesday, just one day after distribution began has been a transparent process. The science is sound and the vaccine is safe. Uh, and this product has rolled out throughout the uh, UK and also through parts of the United States. Um, and it has been well tolerated, well received. And I really do think it's hope in a vial. Dr. McNeil is my sister and was selected as one of 10 doctors who received the first dose of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine at Wake Forest School of Medicine in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Afterwards, we had a waiting period, um, which was about 15 minutes um, where they sat, they monitored us to see if we were okay. And then, then we were off back to work again. According to the CDC, common side effects include pain and swelling around the injection site, fever, chills, tiredness, and headache. I feel just fine. Um, there were some side effects in the beginning, but these are common side effects that um, you can find listed on the vaccine product site, which included some local site pain and discomfort. This particular vaccine is designed to help the body fight COVID-19. This particular vaccine essentially teaches the body how to fight off uh, this type of, to fight off COVID-19 infection through um, a simple task. And um, then it leaves your body to, to do the work for you. McNeil says, like any other vaccine, Bahamians should do their research and ask questions from reputable sources, noting that the vaccine offers hope of a return to normalcy. There are so many people that are dying out there. Um, a lot of the cases, a lot of the states, um, that um, probably the people you've spoken to work in are high morbidity states and a lot of the hospitals are getting overwhelmed. Um, people are getting tired. Um, we want an out and this could potentially be, be the out for us. Tis the season for celebrations and get togethers, but one senior health official is reminding Bahamians and residents to take all precautions to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The Bahamas is currently enjoying relaxed restrictions on all islands, but infectious diseases consultant Dr. Nakia Forbes says just look at how far we've come over the past year. It's been more than a year from since we've known about this virus. It's spread throughout the world. Almost 190 countries have it. It's not going away anytime soon. It's going to be here next year. When, when vaccines are available, it doesn't suddenly happen overnight that, that there's no more COVID-19. 
Now, Dr. Forbes says we must learn to live with COVID-19 and how to prevent the spread of it. That, she adds, will take a combination approach of public health protocols, including hand washing, mask wearing and social distancing. Each on its own is not considered a silver bullet to prevent the spread of the virus. Even if you have your mask on and you go to a huge gathering inside, the masks don't filter all the particles, so you could still get COVID-19. So. Preventing prevention messages, following the, the prevention recommendations is very important now, um, especially as the holiday season approaches and things get a little busier. In other news, opposition leader Philip Davis says he doesn't support government's proposed tax on web shop winnings if other casinos aren't being similarly taxed. He opposed the imposition of taxes on web shop game winnings by Bahamians when you are not taxing foreign winnings by foreigners in the casinos. These new taxes are discriminatory and short-sighted. This strategy is fundamentally flawed. Attorney General Carl Bethel defended government stance, saying casinos bring millions of tourists to the country who pay hotel room taxes, VAT, and other taxes. However, Davis says more taxes on Bahamians will hurt the small man. The country cannot afford additional pain and push, that will push the country into further recession. There is no pro-growth strategy in a country where unemployment is as high as 40%. Still to come on our news, how police say you can keep your home safe after the holidays. Court officials give back to neighboring communities, plus the difference an act of kindness makes. That's coming up when our news returns. I have to go now. But before I leave... No! no! First you need to wash your hands. The holidays are a time to celebrate our connectedness, to strengthen the ties that bind us, that make us, well, family. At Commonwealth Bank, we're your neighbors, your friends, and yes, we're your family. Wishing you warm and sincere best wishes for a happy holiday and a prosperous new year from your family at Commonwealth Bank. Merry Christmas to you. you. Chairman of the National Neighborhood Watch Council, Kino Wong, warning residents to be vigilant this holiday season, as some may use this time to take advantage of the Christmas season. As you leave home, triple check your surroundings. Check your windows. If you have those sliding windows, those hurricane impact windows, we know that they just slide across. Make sure that they are properly secure. Your front door, your back door, your sliding doors, make sure that they are properly locked. Also make sure that the stove is turned off. Triple that, make sure that is off also because there are times that women are in the, ki in the kitchen, men are in the kitchen cooking, preparing meals for, the, for this holiday and they could perhaps leave these things on, not intentionally, but by mistake. Wong even sending this stern warning for after the gifts are opened. We find out that even though warnings goes out, and we try to stress constantly during this peak season of the Christmas season to put those items in the trash bin, tear up those boxes, or perhaps just wait until the appropriate time to take them into a big dumpster. Because when you showcase what you have, you are literally giving the criminal element person an opportunity to say, hey, at that residence, they got a nice iPhone. At that residence, they just purchased a 65 inch. At that residence, they got a PS5. And so we want to encourage our residents, be smart, 
be vigilant. Don't put those stuff outside. According to Wong, this is a great time to get to know your neighbors. Who are the people in your neighborhood? Get to know them. You should know your neighbor on the left and to the right and to the front of you. You should be able to know them by name, their children by name. So at the end of the day, when you leave home, they can also be the eyes and ears for you. Well, the prosecutor's office hosting a give back event for its neighboring communities. Jared Higgs tells us many were grateful for the help ahead of a difficult Christmas. Right down to two tuna fish, two corned beef and no job. It's a tough pandemic Christmas as a year of job losses and lockdowns draws to a close. 52-year-old Ricardo Roxbury says despite his hard luck, there are others who need more than he does. This I get bills that I could never finish paying, but... I feel it for the people who have to pay bills. I don't drive, I don't have a vehicle, so I feel it for their, I feel their pain. You know, this is unprecedented times we are in, and whatever gesture, whatever goodness the government give, I'm gonna appreciate it. We caught up with Roxbury and others at a community give back initiative hosted by the prosecutor's office on Nassau Street. These sorts of give back events have become a staple of life for many, including some who struggled before the pandemic. Sharice Miller is a government janitress, and she's remained employed during the pandemic. The mother of one says she's lucky, but things are still tough as the only breadwinner for her daughter. She says even she has had to make sacrifices during these times. I used to buy her with little things what she liked. Basically, I, I try my best to only buy her like, with grocery because where things become so difficult since the pandemic. For some, working isn't an option. Linda Miller says seizures prevent her from finding steady employment. For that reason, these charitable initiatives are important. My head is starting, and I feel dizzy. I be buying up my time. The prosecutor's office gave out tickets to people from the community, and they were able to come and collect their groceries. They also delivered groceries to the elderly. Deputy Commissioner of Police Ismaila Davis Delancey applauded the officers for their efforts. As we create safer communities, we are making sure that the complete person, you know, Maslow talk about the hierarchy needs of persons. As we go through this pandemic, we've met a lot of people who are hurting, a lot of people who need, and so the officers came together and they partnered with the business community, and, that, and so today is the result of what we see today. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. And 2020 has been a rough year for everyone, thanks to the global COVID-19 pandemic. For some, it's been harder than others, but throughout the year, there have been acts of kindness that have helped get many through the toughest times. In this report, our Jasmine Brown speaks to those who insist kindness counts this holiday season. Here's her report. The COVID-19 pandemic and its crushing blow to the economy has left many people in need. As a result, charities and feeding centers across the country have seen an increase in demand, and it has been that kindness that has gotten many through the toughest of times, like Ken Wilson, who we recently met at singing Bishop Lawrence Rolls Feeding Center. Wilson, who is working, says times are so tough that he could not get his four-year-old's daughter a gift this year. People are there, we can't afford it. Me, I can't afford a gift for my child, so I just come here to Bishop. That's why I get married to Bishop, and Bishop doing a good job. Wilson says he and others have gotten through it thanks to the generosity of others. It's a concept that was embraced by some of the children we also met at the Bishop's Church. The kids say they have learned that kindness goes a long way, adding it's especially important this Christmas. It's important that last local for your family and stay with one another and, and treat them well for Christmas. The, the people to get Christmas stuff and bring, in, bring stuff to them. 12-year-old Nathaniel Turner says this holiday season is also about sharing what you have, whether it's a gift or just a kind word. You have to share, give thanks, and keep, keep sharing and sharing and sharing until you can't stop. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. And while many have faced tough times in 2020, one local pastor is encouraging Bahamians to keep the faith and stay encouraged. Singing Bishop Lawrence Roll says while many have less this year, they should celebrate the little they do have. I want to encourage them and say, you know, if you don't have it, give God praise. You got life. Death globally has crossed the whole world and it pleased the Lord for us to be here today. The popular pastor added that this Christmas should be all about the love. Love can be understood in any language. 
If you give people a, a glass of water, give it to them in love. If you give them a slice of bread, give it to them in love. You know, when I was a little boy coming up, I tell God, if I ever become a leader, I'm going to treat people good. And people just come from everywhere. It's because of the love. He added that he will continue to spread love through his feeding program that assists hundreds of people every week. When our news comes back from the break, a Christmas wish granted and a preschooler gives back. We have the details when our news returns. So to be the best, everything has to be done the right way, not the second, third time, it's the first time. A lot of people have been doing jogging lately. It's really important to have the, like, the, the sunny water and the power way to make sure everybody got their beverages while they exercise to stay healthy. I was really happy how my teammates look at me and see the great work I was putting up with the company. But everybody else here, you know, doing a really good work. Uh, my name is Hans Hidaksara and I'm a driver salesman. This year has been hard on all of us. Many have lost friends and loved ones to COVID-19, which has changed the world and the way we live. From the start of the first case to the second wave, our news has been there with you, and we will continue to stand with you this holiday season. Sharing in your stories of tragedy and triumph, Christmas may look and feel very different this year. But its meaning of love and hope remains the same. From our family to yours, Merry Christmas and a safe and prosperous New Year. Looking for quiet, relaxation, elegance and luxurious but yet affordable pampering, come and see us at Baja Retreat Spa, East Bay Street next to Luciano's. How about a manicure, pedicure, facial, eyebrow threading and body sugaring? You can purchase an instant gift certificate online at www.baharetreat.com or call us at 323-6711. You ask how long This is our news. Welcome back. Just when they thought Christmas would be bleak, two moms got the surprise of a lifetime. Gifts for their little ones. Kyle Joaquin has more. No, they don't actually. I just told them I was picking up gifts. For Kalia Farrington, she was concerned that Christmas may not have been bright for her and her four children, ages three, five, seven, as well as a two-month-old baby. This year, um, the pandemic, everything wasn't in shape, you know, struggling mother, unemployed, no help from their dads whatsoever. This is totally amazing and mind blowing for me. But Guardian Radio and The Revolution with host Juan McCartney partnered with Kelly's and a few corporate sponsors to bring some joy to the family. Bicycles, books and other toys, now all theirs. The best part is Farrington says the children had no idea. I feel overwhelmed and ecstatic and to watch the joy of my kids' faces would be so uh, joyful. And it was the same for mother of four, Raquel Brainin, who has two children still under her care. After the pandemic dealt her family of low, the generous gifts of a drone and toys for her children were appreciated. This is a blessing for them because it's been a real hard year. With everybody in my household being self-employed, um, the pandemic really put a damper on everything for us. It just, finances were like non-existing. And so trying to have one wanting to go to college, one just being grateful. And the sweetest thing my 12 year old said, he said, mommy, this Christmas is going to be great because the greatest gift I have is that I'm alive. Guardian Radio production coordinator Preston Ferguson Jr. explains it was just the team's way of giving back. We actually just want to do something good um, for kids in the middle of this um, pandemic and everything that's going on. So we had folks email in their names, had them list their what they would want for their children, what they would need for their children, and Juan and I just ended up getting it. Um, thanks to the gracious support of Kelly's and everyone else that sponsored and donated, we ended up making some Christmas dreams come true. For Our News, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Thanks, Kyle. Well, four-year-old Brielle and Brister acted as Santa's little helper this holiday season as she gave toys to those in need. The mammoth task started in October when Brielle baked cupcakes and raised $1,000 in sales to purchase toys. I feel wonderful and 
I'm so happy to give the presents out to the boys and girls. She gave out the 125 gifts in Nassau Village and Bamboo Town. Her parents, Brian and Treva, said they were proud of Riel's philanthropic efforts, especially now when many are in need. And to, to be able to see a daughter, you know, at such a young age, doing something, and you're talking about, you know, philanthropy and being a young philanthropist and, and understanding the importance of not being all about you and about others. And I think that, that just goes to show and it speaks volumes of the, the parenting that she was being able to receive. And I feel good as a parent knowing that my daughter is actually on the right track. It fills my heart. And so this year, 2020, when things are really, really rough, I know persons will appreciate the gifts even more so. Assistant Superintendent of Police Davey Pratt says it's important for the community to continue to help each other during these hard times. He adds that officers are continuing to connect with residents to help nurture a safer and more productive community. The area is really densely populated with a lot of kids and it's an area that is, is somewhat that need help. So um, with this giving gifts in those two communities, um, I think it's, it's it's really fitting at this time. We are on the ground every single day. We are walking and talking to the community, trying to build that strong relationship with the community and the police. Um, East Street South Police Station now have turned into a community police station. Meanwhile, over on Exuma, hundreds of youngsters received Christmas presents courtesy of the Sandals Foundation and Hasbro. Sandals Emerald Bay General Manager Jeremy Mutton was happy to see the smiles on their happy faces. Last 10 years, um, the Sandals Foundation partner with Hasbro, who are well known for their um, sort of quality product toys. And um, every year we have donated um, over 600 toys, really nice toys and games, uh, which we then distribute uh, within Exuma um, to ensure as many children as possible, you know, at least have a gift to open um, at Christmas. Usually Sandals hosts all the children on the island of Exuma on property for a celebration ending with Santa's arrival. This year, because of coronavirus restrictions, that wasn't possible. Still, Mutton says it was important for the children to get their gifts. As, as the largest business and the largest employer on Exuma, it's, uh, it's a civic responsibility that we treat um, and take very seriously. I think this year, perhaps, more than any years previously um, has been so important, particularly um, for this toy distribution uh, with the Sandals Foundation, because, you know, it's been such a, a difficult year for everyone, including the children and the students. We really wanted to kind of give some sense of normalcy um, at, at the end of this year. Um, and, you know, what nicer way at Christmas time for them to actually see um, Santa and Mrs. Claus to receive a gift. Um, so that was really, you know, what it was all about. Our Berthony McDermott introduces us to a few of his favorite things that's coming up when our news returns. As we navigate the COVID-19 pandemic, many businesses are adjusting to a new normal. Doctors Hospital is offering a specialized LAMP COVID response plan to help your business adjust. Benefits include free enrollment, free primary care visits, discounts on lab, pharmacy, and imaging, a 20% discount on PCR testing, free mobile collection of COVID-19 specimens, and free contact tracing for members of your team. To sign up, email us at dhresponse at doctorshosp.com. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. Isn't your health worth it? Just when you thought the air would end drill, Rev came through with Magic and Holiday Chair. Our cash back will double making more spirits rise with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. Just sign up for Trio and pay your Rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.bs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Feel the Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. This year has been hard on all of us. Many have lost friends and loved ones to COVID-19, which has changed the world and the way we live. From the first case to the second wave, our news has been there with you, and we will continue to stand with you this holiday season. Sharing in your stories of tragedy and triumph, Christmas may look and feel very different this year, but its meaning of love and hope remains the same. From our family to yours, Merry Christmas and a safe and prosperous New Year.
Welcome back to our news. Christmas dinner is a big Bahamian tradition, and by now, many have already enjoyed a feast in some form. As we celebrate our favorite things on our news, our Bethany McDermott gets busy in the kitchen. Every year as Christmas approaches, I look forward to the food. And while my role is usually limited to eating, I decided to step into the kitchen this year. Raven Scott Barry from Madam Mad Batter welcomed me into her kitchen to give me a lesson on how to make double chocolate turtle pecan cookies. First, we added butter and sugar. Yeah, we're going to start with your butter and your sugars and you're going to put them in the bowl and you're going to mix them together. Okay, so just put it in? Yeah, you're just going to dump the butter in. Alright, here we go. And then you're going to dump the sugar in. Just dump it in? Yes. So, so you have brown, yes, so you have brown sugar and then you have regular brown, no. No, no problem. Just Sorry, <laughs> Just brown sugar, granulated sugar, and you're gonna mix all of that together. Oh, so then you're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. And then one egg. I know you say you don't bake, but you should be able to crack an egg. Got this. There we go. Oh, use the fancy cracking on the bowl time. Then we switched to a larger bowl where we added flour, cocoa powder, salt, and baking soda. Next, we mix the two together to get our cookie dough. Once it's covered, we're going to put it in the fridge to chill for about two hours. Once it's chilled, we roll it into little balls and dip them in pecans before sliding them into the oven. Let's put it on. Yes. Let me clean up first before I put the cake. So then you're going to put it in the oven and you're going to bake at 350 degrees. 11 minutes later, the cookies were done. And we're gonna take them out. And there you go. Then came my favorite part. Time to taste the masterpiece. And there you have it. Your cookies have cooled, your caramel has set, and now you're gonna do the ultimate taste test and let us know if you like what you baked. Look at what I made, Mom. Wouldn't she be proud? <laughs> I, well, okay, let's see, let's see. And I think you just popped the whole thing in your mouth, but mm -hmm. it's fine. <laughs> it was the drizzling for me. It was the drizzling yeah, I think for my drizzling got it. Reporting for Our News, I'm Bethany McDermott. Those look pretty good. Well, despite a rocky business year, a small business owner says this season is still for celebrating and giving. Born Again Naturals owner Renee Sweeting says while the COVID-19 pandemic has had an effect on her business, she's grateful for her customers and wants them to feel the love this holiday season. But this year has been interesting because some of our major distributors are either closed or downsizing and so product sales have not been where they usually are. But even with that, even with business not being the way that everyone expects it to be, we're still, still celebrating and we're still giving back because we're still grateful and we still want people to know, we want people to feel the love this holiday season. You may not be able to celebrate in the usual way that we used to, but we can still celebrate. The Natural Boutique was born when Sweeting was researching sleep solutions for her toddlers. The natural products she found were either too expensive or filled with chemicals, so she decided to create a line of her own. Born Again Naturals is in 25 stores locally and available for international shipping through their website. The company is giving away 365 of their natural soaps as a holiday give back, celebrating six years in business. What better way to celebrate than to give back? This is our own party where we're giving back to our customers and giving back to new persons who may be interested in trying a product and they're like, you know, I'm a little hesitant. So we just want them to know that, hey, natural products are good. They're better than the conventional products. They provide the same results without the side effects. Finally, in news tonight, we leave you with a look at the lighter side of Grand Bahama. The island was hit particularly hard by Hurricane Dorian last year and the COVID-19 pandemic this year. But the holiday spirit is still in the air as season's greetings and well wishes adorn roundabouts in Freeport and Lucaya. Well, thank you for joining us for our news this Christmas night. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. Have a Merry Christmas, Bahamas.